how's it going everyone? I hope you're having a great day so far. Mine's been fantastic. I'm hoping to spend a couple of days away from the studio, but before I do that, I wanted to share with you my brand new light that I have here sitting beside me. And I'm really excited about it because I know a lot of you are interested in working with constant lights for food photography, and I can understand why. I mean, they're perfect for the type of photography that we do. Now, Falcon Eyes, the company that uh, makes this light, they reached out to me and they said, hey, Skylar, we have a light. We think it's gonna be great for food photography. Come check it out. It's the SO48TD Flapjack light. I mean, look how thin that is. It's pretty cool. Now, this is not a paid review or anything, but because I know so many of you are interested in constant lighting that I thought, hey, why not bring it to the studio, set it up, test it out, see how it works in a real shoot. If you're interested in this light, then check out the link in the description below. Now, I know a lot of you have seen me work with this light. It's the cheap $20 special from Home Depot. However, would I recommend this as a light for food photography? Well, if your budget is really, really low, then yeah, why not? If you can muster up a couple hundred more dollars for a light, then absolutely not. I would recommend going for the better light because, well, this is what I look for in a constant light. One, power controls. I wanna be able to turn that light down and crank it up. Two, variable color temperatures, but more on this later. Three, I really wanna be able to modify that light. Four, because I record videos, I want it to be quiet and I need it to be cool. And five, I really, really want that light to be bright. Now I haven't found a constant light yet that matches all of these five things. Well, at least that's in my budget, but you can find one that matches most of them. I get a lot out of my equipment, but you know, I'm not expecting this light to match every single one of my needs as a photographer. However, like most lights in this price range, the Falcon Eyes does have this nice diffuse panel in front of the light, and that really softens the light, it's nice. But I can't really add any other modifiers to this light, like a grid, a snoot, a softbox, barn doors, or anything like that, and that's a big downside for me. Although, there are name brand constant lights out there that allow you to modify them like you can with studio strobes, but then you're in the price range of anywhere between 600 and thousands of dollars, and you're still not getting all of the features that I would look for in a constant light. So if you were to buy a light like the Falcon Eyes here, you would have money left over to buy diffusers and flags and stands and all that great stuff that you can use to modify the light. Real quick, before I get to this light and the shoot, I wanna to talk to you about two of the key features that I look for in a constant light. One is variable power controls, and the other is variable color temperature. And the Falcon here has both, and they work pretty great. I mean, right now it's lighting my face, it's only at about 60%, but it's definitely acting as my key light. But if I tap on the back of the touch screen here, I can change the power down to say, 20%. Then the Falcon acts as a fill light, which is super helpful. I mean, if you're on a shoot, you have two of these lights, you wanna make one brighter than the other, you can easily do that at the touch of a button, which I'm sure is not amazing to most of you out there. But if you're coming from the land of that $20 Home Depot special construction light, which absolutely has no power controls, then I'm sure you can appreciate that. Then you have the variable color temperature feature of the light, which is really cool. Right now the light is all messed up. It's set to daylight or 5600K, and my camera is white balanced for my Edison bulbs here. But I can quickly change that by using that little touch screen on the back of the light. And everything's back to normal. And although it's not super critical for still photography, it's incredibly useful for when you're doing videos like recipe videos, or if you're doing your own YouTube videos like I am here in a studio where I can easily change to the color temperature of my studio lights. Or if I change locations, then I can match the temperature there as well. But hey, let's get rocking with this light and some tasty B-roll. using my studio strobes or a flash to light my food, it would overpower all of these other lights that I'm using right now to light this video. But because I'm using a constant light, like the Falcon Eyes here, or any constant light for that matter, all of these lights, these lights, these lights, they're gonna show up in my photograph. So, I'm actually gonna move this light over here to the other side. I think it'll work better that way. 
Okay, I really want to hammer in this point real quick before we get started because it's one of the biggest mistakes I see beginners make when they first start using constant lighting because if you are using this kind of lighting, you want to make sure every other light source in your studio space is turned off. One, you don't want those lights to change the exposure of your image any, but two, you really don't want to include different color temperatures from various different lights around your room. So with that being said, I have the Falcon Eyes here. It's set up about a foot away from the table. I want to see what it looks like unmodified at 100%. So let's take this image. All right, well, that's not bad, actually. Now, for my camera gear, I was using my Canon 5DS with the 100 millimeter lens attached to it. My aperture was set to f5.6, ISO 100, and the shutter speed at one tenth of a second, which kind of gives you an idea of how bright this light is at 100%. It's not too incredibly bright, but you know, hey, it gets the job done as, as long as your camera is on a tripod. Now, the highlights look good, but the image, you know, it, it's really contrasty with, you know, very defined sharp shadows. Although, you know, I didn't really expect much else without it being modified. A real quick light lesson here for those of you just starting out, look at the shadows on my hand. The closer the light is to the subject, the softer those shadows will be. But the farther we get away, the harder and more defined they get. Personally, I'm a modify everything type of guy. So I'm gonna place this large diffuser between my Falcon flapjack lights and the real flapjack sitting there on my table. And I think it's gonna look pretty good too because this light's gonna hit the diffuser. The diffuser will become its own new light source, really large and really close to my subject. The only problem is it's gonna knock down the exposure by a couple of stops, but it's really no big deal because my camera is locked down on a tripod. That diffused light is looking pretty good. I mean, I kept the same aperture and ISO, but the diffuser, because it knocks down the exposure a little, I had to use a shutter speed of one second, so a little bit slower, even though the Falcon was still set at 100% brightness. This would be a problem for those hand holders out there, so you gotta use a tripod. Now, side by side, you can see the difference. The diffuser really softens up that shadow side, so you can even see detail down there in those little blueberries. And it also softened up those pin-sized specular highlights on the berries that are sitting on top of that stack. With it not being that expensive and with a little extra diffusement, I'd have to say, the flapjack light worked pretty well photographing these flapjacks. I'm impressed. It's a sick little light for food photography. Whoa. All right. For those of you who follow my channel, I know you're like, what happened to the Sunday sit down? Where is it? Well, I'm hoping to plan something really big for the next couple of critiques, and I wanted to save your images for that. But regardless, next Sunday's sit down will go on as planned. But in the meantime, I wanted to answer a couple of the comments from you awesome folks. The first question comes from James. James asks, what do you do with all that food that's left over after shoots? For example, after that cookie shoot. Do you sell it somehow or give it away to neighbors? Peace, awesome work. Well, first off, James, thank you. Really appreciate it. You always end up cooking a bunch of food and then selecting the best ones out of all that food to photograph. And as far as the, the food that's on the table, usually it's sat out way too long and you wouldn't want to eat it. You know, it's way old. Or if it's meat, it could be like poisonous or something like that. So it gets thrown away. But all the other stuff, yeah, we give it to neighbors or we eat it ourselves. All right, sun was killing me. I had to move. Now... Kelly says, the production quality of your videos is so high with so many shots and angles. Well, thank you, Kelly. And she asks, how do you balance paying attention to the food photography that you're doing when you have so many, I'm assuming, sketched, planned, and scripted video scenes to shoot? Well, that is tough. And these tutorials are incredibly difficult to make. I'm not going to lie. And if I'm going to be real with you, Kelly... Uh, I'm going to say that the photography that I'm doing in these tutorials, I don't believe is of the same quality as the stuff that's in my portfolio. And it's not, I'm not trying to say that the stuff that I'm doing here is terrible or you're right. I don't have a hundred percent of my attention on the photograph like I do when I'm just making pictures for my portfolio. I mean, my attention is divided between cooking, between filming, between coming up with a script and a, and a shot list. I'm always trying to make the photograph as best as possible for these tutorials. I want them to be fun, but I want them to be educational. If the photo is, is terrible, then, then you're not gonna learn anything. So I think overall my pre-production planning and a whole lot of luck really just leads to everything coming out all right. Dario asks, where do you live? 
Well, hi, Dario. I live atop a mountain in Southern California, but I've lived everywhere in the Middle East and in Asia. I lived outside of the U.S. for about 12 years, you know, just eating my way across the world. But now I'm back, you know, chilling with the mountain lions and the bears. All right, the last one comes from Ruli. She asks, do you have a tutorial for the amateur like me who likes taking pictures with their phone camera? Well, actually, Ruli, to have you know, I have this tutorial, this very same tutorial, in the works right now as we speak. It should drop in the next couple of weeks. But tell me, everyone, is this something that you would be interested in? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And, you know, thanks to everyone for your questions. I really love it, people. Keep them coming. All right, well, I hope this video helps in your search for a constant light. This little flapjack light, it's pretty nifty, and I think it's perfect for anyone looking for a simple solution to lighting their photographs, you know? You have to modify it a little bit, but hey, that's the fun part, right? So check it out in the link in the description below. And you know what else is fun? Subscribe into this channel, turn on that notification button so you can see more of these tasty videos, leaving a comment down below, a like, a thumbs up, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.